in this week's Bondi Vet compilation. She is the absolute epitome of mystery. Move over Sherlock Holmes and CSI. He stinks and his temperature is really high. Weird. Because there are new detectives in town. If my hunch is correct, then somewhere in this enclosure, there's going to be the key to this whole problem. And the pressure's on to uncover the truth. Not quite what I was expecting. Before it's too late. They might die before I actually work out what's going on here. Can you solve these pet mysteries before our Bondi vet? It's sometimes not clear cut, it's not easy. Hey Liz. Hi Chris. Yeah, we've got big troubles with devils today. We've got one mum and four babies, all sick. Yeah. One of them's not moving at all. Okay, jeez. All right, let's go. Jeez. Yeah, they're flat. They're really flat. At the Australian Reptile Park, two Tasmanian Devil sisters are in quarantine. Keeper Liz is worried their illness may spread to the rest of the Devil colony. This is Lara. She wow, was the first one that we found, and she just has shown no improvement whatsoever. She's totally unresponsive. Yeah. I get called out to the Reptile Park a lot, but it's rare that I walk in, and I'm so shocked to see just how sick these little guys are. Usually, you know, you'd have some sort of an idea of what might have caused it, but with her, we just seem to have no idea and it's just come out of nowhere. The mystery illness has also struck Lara's sister, Lily. She'll get up on all fours and then she'll just slump over and she just gives up. With an animal this sick, I'd expect a fever, I'd expect vomiting, coughing, diarrhoea, just something. With these devils, there's nothing. We've got to buy some time here because at the moment she is the absolute epitome of mystery. Yeah. The one thing that really worries me, they might die before I actually work out what's going on here. You almost have to keep on checking that she's alive, don't you? Yeah, each time we've come in, we literally have to check that she's breathing, otherwise we would have thought she's dead. What she needs is some fluids. I'm um, gonna to need to test her, her glucose level, because mm -hmm. A baby this, this young and this small just doesn't have the, the fat reserves to keep herself going without eating. So if that glucose level drops too low, she'll die. If a fluid level drops too low, she'll basically die as well. So we just dribble this onto her tongue. There you go, girl, it's good. All right, because she is dehydrated, it's going to be quite hard to get a vein here. Hopefully blood tests will confirm just what is shutting down the devil's systems. You see that just collapses once it, you take the blood out of it. To have any sick animal here at the reptile park is a big deal, but to have a Tasmanian devil is a major crisis. Tassie devils are under threat because in the wild they're developing a fatal tumour on their face. They estimate that Tassie devils are going to be extinct in the wild in the next five years. The only hope of preventing this species from becoming extinct is to set up breeding colonies. This is one of the few places in the country that does that. If these guys have a disease that can be transferred to the rest of the population here, it could wipe them out. Look, well, hopefully this holds a secret to what's going on here. I'm looking at Lara, totally confused. And then all of a sudden I think, there's only one thing that causes animals just to lie there motionless like this. It's botulism. If they take on enough toxin that it actually paralyzes their breathing, it can kill them. To know for sure, I need to go and see mum and her enclosure. Because if I'm right, that's where the answer's gonna lie. Just hand her girl. We'll do all the worrying, all right? So where is she hidden? Chris now needs to examine the devil's mother to see how she's coping. I don't know where your babies are, don't you girl, huh? They're okay. They're hanging in there. Right now, it seems to me like the whole family's been affected by this, but to varying degrees. Their mother, little lady, doesn't look 100%, but at the same time, she's nowhere near as sick as the kids are. You're gonna be surprised, but I think they've all been affected by botulism. When people hear the word botulism, they freak out because they have no idea what it's all about. But think Botox. It causes paralysis. It paralyzes the skin in the face and reduces those wrinkles in those Hollywood movie stars. It does the same thing to devils, but on a much bigger scale. Botulism is a rare and potentially fatal condition. 
and is usually contracted by ingesting toxins in food. If my hunch is correct, then somewhere in this enclosure there's going to be a well-hidden piece of meat that could actually hold the key to this whole problem. It goes around here to the right. There's an old bit of meat there. Botulinum toxin, which causes botulism, is one of the most potent forces on the planet. Just one microgram can kill a person. By stashing the meat, little lady has unwittingly exposed her joeys to the ultimate danger. It's about 4,000 to 1 shots all coming together at one time. So we might test this. If we find the toxin in here, then that's our answer. Yep. There is no quick fix for botulism. All Liz and Callie can do is support the devils with fluids and hope they're strong enough to fight off the toxin. I can see this has already taken a huge emotional toll on Liz and Kelly, but in many ways the fight's only just begun. Come on, puppy. Just gotta fight and get through it. Australian Reptile Park keeper Liz has now brought the critically ill Lara and Lily back to her house for 24-hour care. It appears the devils are suffering from the deadly condition, botulism. There is one major complication. They're not her only live-in responsibilities. <laughs> also hand raising two other Tasmanian devil joeys, Scratch and Smiggle. They now have to be quarantined from the six sisters. I've got to be super careful that I don't spread anything from the healthy devils to the sick devils or vice versa. Oh, yummy. Lily has shown some improvement and kept down a small amount of food. But Lara hasn't eaten for a week. We're getting to the point where we're really desperate for them to get through it. OK, Lara, let's give you a little bit. Come on. Good girl. That's what we want to see. At last, Lara takes her first mouthful. It's so exciting to see them feed. You know, it's such a relief to finally see some progress. Hello. Hey, Liz, it's Chris here from the vet clinic. Now, I do have some results back. Their comeback has been positive for botulism. This is, to be honest, the first botulism case I've ever seen. They will have the signs of it between one and three weeks. Three weeks? That's such a yeah. long time. Give them all the, all the love and all the attention you can and, and, um, and give yourself a bit as well. Just, just try to rest that way you can. Okay, bye-bye. So sweet because Lara doesn't have the strength to clean herself, but Lily helps her. They're so precious, these two, and every devil. They're just really important and I, all I want is for them to get better. So excited for you to see them. Well, I've got to say, so am I. Oh, the change is amazing. You're the same too, right? Yeah. yeah, well, you wouldn't think so. This was Lara and Lily a month ago. The Tasmanian devil Joeys were so close to losing their battle with botulism. Yeah, everyone worried, didn't you? It's probably the longest sleep I've ever seen, <laughs> ever. <laughs> They don't like the innocent now, hands in the air. <laughs> you had a scare. <laughs> if you could hope for a dramatic recovery in any animal, it'd have to be the Tassie Devil. It is such a, a beautiful ending to have because even my most optimistic side probably didn't ever dare believe it would end like this. Hello, look how sad you are. How did you get so sad? At Kate's Bondi Vet Hospital, Simon has rushed in with his unusually subdued Doberman, Ben. A tail between his legs, that's unusual for him. Yeah, it's so unusual. Okay.
Benny is one of Kate's regular patients. Today she's alarmed at the dramatic change in the young dog. Let's go this way. Come on, Benny. Ben hurt his leg, so he's been walking funny, and he seems like he's just very out of it, where he's usually really quite happy. He comes here a lot. But he just walked in really quiet and sombre, so there's definitely something not right. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. Yesterday, we were playing in the garage and he had a fall, like he fell, I heard him yell. He hobbled a bit, walked so it off. So right back? Fine. Yeah, he held Hold it up. It up. Yeah, yep. and then he walked it off and I was like, oh, okay, he's fine. And then my housemate called today and said, oh, he's not moving. And then he started shivering, so I was like, okay. And I've never seen him with his tail like that. No, and you've seen him a few times, like he always has so much energy. Kate's baffled when she hears Benny's symptoms. It's unlikely a leg injury would cause such a dramatic change in behaviour. This is not like him at all, is it? Benny. Yesterday, we were playing in the garage and he fell, I heard him yell. He hobbled a bit and then he walked it off and I was like, oh, okay, he's fine. And then he started shivering, so I was like, okay. And I've never seen him with his tail like that. In Bondi, Kate is trying to piece together what's happened to Simon's doberman, Benny and find out why the young dog is so lethargic. A nurse has come in to assist so Kate can carry out a full examination. Let's just pull him slightly this way so I can get behind him. Okay, let's just start at the beginning. Just having a look at how he places his feet. Okay, so this is left back. We've got a movable knee there. Whether he's gonna crush it. Blind Freddy can see that there's something wrong with Ben's leg. His right hind leg, he's really lame on it. He doesn't say much, does he? But Kate's not convinced a possible leg injury is the cause of Benny's extreme drowsiness. Is he trying to fall asleep? What's going on here? Every single patient that comes through the door, I go nose to tail, and that means I look at every single small detail, despite what the owner tells me. It is so easy to miss something in veterinary medicine if you don't be thorough. So Ben has papillomavirus. That is not the reason for him being lethargic today and why he's here. But we've seen you before about your papillomas, haven't we? Stinks. You smell something that stinks? Yes, there's something infected around here. Yeah. Do you smell that? Well, I wasn't sure if that was his mouth. Something wrong with you, Ben. As Kate continues her examination, the list of worrying symptoms continues to grow. Spoiling. 40.1. Why are you so hot, mate? 40.2. He's too hot. Things are just not making sense. He's got a temperature, his temperature's at 40.3, which is ridiculously high. He's mentally dull. You see him tremoring, like he's shaking. He seems like he doesn't really know what's going on and all he wants to do is sleep. There is something going on with Ben that is not related to his leg. No possibility that he would have had any drugs, right? No. Is there anything that you can think of that he could have gotten hold of? Uh, not at home. He, but would he be the type that eats something else the ground? Yes, yeah. And I try to watch it so much, like I don't even, like I'm on him all the time. I'm gonna run a drug test anyway. We need to be thorough, we need to be systematic and try and figure out what's going on. Good boy. To me, he looks like he's tripping. Yeah, he's not going home. So first thing, let's take some blood, start getting them run, because I wanna figure out what's going on. It's, he stinks and his temperature's really high. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Like I know, sweetheart. Come on, let's get going. Good boy, Ben. Hey, it's to rule out any form of drug poisoning. Excellent. Kate is carrying out urgent blood and urine tests. So far we've got negative for cocaine, amphetamine negative, benzodiazepine negative, positive for THC. He's got cannabis toxicity. Benny. Explains quite a lot, right? Explains our temperature, explains why he's shivering, why he's so sleepy. In Bondi, Kate has finally discovered why Doberman Benny is so lethargic. He's tested positive for cannabis, a drug that's much more toxic in dogs than in humans. Even a small amount can cause dramatic fluctuations in blood pressure and heart rate. 
So what I'm going to do with him is I'm going to get him started on some IV fluids ASAP. Sure. I'm going to keep him for a little while. Okay. Can you walk, buddy? He seems to be like getting slightly worse. Come on, you want to get up? Okay, we're going to take you through to bed. With Ben super relaxed and sleepy from the cannabis, Kate wants to further investigate the possibility he may also have a leg injury. He's just lying down like this. Come on, boy. X-ray. Let's sort his situation out. So there's some inflammation in that joint. So this is all swollen around here, this little leg. I also don't love that situation. The images will be sent off to an orthopaedic surgeon for further investigation. Hi. This is Ben. He ate cannabis. Ben will need to stay under close observation at the vet hospital until the cannabis wears off. You're a good Doberman. Yes, you are. You're a good baby Doberman. A week after Kate diagnosed cannabis poisoning in Doberman Benny, the young dog has made a full recovery. And in more good news, his limp has improved his x-rays have come back all clear for joint problems. There you go. It's a chat, isn't it? Yes, it is. G'day, Chris. How, How are, are you, mate? Good to Very see well. you. Got a good one for me today, huh? Uh, I've got an interesting one for you, yeah. A uh, death adder. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I heard. The following morning, Chris is at Featherdale Wildlife Park in Sydney's west. He's answering a call for help from the park senior curator, Chad Staples. So we called Chris in today basically to help us solve a bit of a mystery. Fifi, our death adder, has a very obvious swelling in an interesting part of her body. Although you always hope for the best, I'm a little concerned about it. This is her, Fifi. Wow. She's either really let herself go or there's something <laughs> else that's going on. Death adders are renowned for being quite short and almost stumpy snakes. But the moment I look at her, I can tell straight away, yeah, there's a problem here. Has she been quite active or...? No, and I mean, you know what death adders are like. They, they're the, the lure hunter, mm. so she's not active, but she's off of food. Okay. And so the fact that she's still swollen was, like I said, a bit of an alarm bell for me because she loves her mice. How long since the last mouse? Three weeks. Okay. So a considerable amount of time. Like, she should have passed everything that she's had. Yeah. There are a few reasons to be worried, I guess. And, and certainly, if she is suffering some sort of indigestion or, or impaction, then, then it, it would explain it. Yep. The location of the swelling, it's, that's, I guess, a little bit interesting because it it's is... It's pretty high, it is isn't high. it? Yeah. yeah. And then that's not really where we'd expect to see mice that have stayed undigested. Yep. Honestly, my worst fear now with Fifi is that this swelling is some sort of blockage, whether it be digestive or some sort of gas. It's, it's concerning because of where it is and how big it is, and the fact that it really hasn't dissipated in the last three weeks when she also hasn't eaten. Yeah. Fifi yeah. needs an urgent I examination, but getting close to this snake is extremely dangerous. We're going to have to get in there and have a look, aren't we? Absolutely. What are we talking about? The eighth most venomous snake in the world? Yep, she's definitely top ten, the death adders. Yep. When this is the eighth most venomous snake in the world, with the fastest strike of any snake, you've got to be on your toes. Hello. Oh, Here she is. Behind lock and behind key. Behind the lock and key, that's right. Oh, look, she knew you were coming. Fifi the death adder has developed a mystery swelling around her middle and now requires an examination. Chris is going to have to be really on his guard now that it's coming time to handle Fifi because she is very fast when she wants to be and of course in the top 10 most venomous snakes so he's really going to have to be on his game. Easy does it, girl. Here she comes. Handling a venomous snake, it's obviously incredibly risky, but we've got one thing in our favour here. It's a tube. Snakes will instinctively want to slither up the tube, so if we can use that, all of a sudden we turn things around in our favour. 
Well done. Perfect. It's always a nice moment <laughs> when, when she's in there. With her head safely up that tube, I can now get a good feel of her. Hopefully we can get this examination done quickly and work out exactly what is going on. So I guess I'm, I'm looking for a few things. It, it's her withdrawing in pain and, yep. and really getting agitated by that, but also it's just the texture of it all. What I'm feeling, it doesn't feel like gas. It's kind of spongy, kind of soft, almost like it's a build-up of fluid. The location is really the critical thing here. If you think about it, our heart would be here, lungs in this first bit here, stomachs down the middle and then intestines. But you've got to remember she's a female. <laughs> That's right. So her reproductive tract is going to be sort of through this middle area here because she's either got some sort of impaction in a, in a lower part of her stomach or she has something filling up her reproductive tract, which you yep. would think would be a pregnancy. So the only way to, to truly know for sure is going to be to actually have a look inside, inside. there. Mm -hmm. Despite a lot of looking and a lot of prodding, to be honest, I'm no closer to working out what is actually happening here. So it's time to take this examination to the next level. Thankfully, these guys do have an ultrasound machine. So by using that, I should be able to get an answer as to what's happening. Okay, so I reckon we start around this, this middle area here. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we're getting a bit of stomach here. Yep. But it's empty stomach. Yep. Which is hopefully a good sign. Just working our way down here. That area at the top of the screen there, yep. where we've got the little circle, that looks like a gallbladder and I think it's a liver around it. We still don't have anything that's causing this swelling yet. So far we've found a liver, a gallbladder, but no answers as to what's going on here. Okay, so that area is moving. I'm pretty sure that is actually intestine there. Now if we had a blockage there, that shouldn't be contracting. Okay. Chris is now certain that gas or a blockage isn't causing Fifi's problem. So, we're going to have to keep on searching because right now, we actually don't have any answers. Yep. See that? As Chris moves the probe over Fifi's belly, he notices something very unusual. Huh. Something in there is about half a centimetre wide but a couple of centimetres long with vertebrae. Finally, after all this searching, we've got an answer. Turns out it's answers. Mate, I think she's got babies. That would be fantastic because Fifi didn't breed last year and she was in a, a breeding program last year, so you do start to wonder if maybe she's too old now. Oh, that's, that's unreal. We don't just have babies, we've got live babies. <laughs> Which is the best kind. Yeah. So what about how many? Yeah, Any idea? I knew you'd ask that. <laughs> well, I need that now to better prepare, I mean. So they're venomous the day they're born, aren't they? From day dot. Yep, as soon as they're out, they're ready to go. Wow. You've got... <laughs> I'd say at least 16, and, and I'd be thinking more like around 20. Well, I'm ecstatic to hear that Fifi's actually pregnant. You, you do worry that that swelling was going to be something nasty, but the fact that it means that she's got potentially 20 babies there that I've now got to prepare for, I'm over the moon. Considering what that swelling could have been. <laughs> Fantastic That's, outcome. That is a great outcome. And not just that, I mean, she's carrying them and carrying them very well. Yep. So Fifi, congratulations. Normally there's a kiss involved at this time, but I think we'll pass on that. Maybe not today. Normally a pregnancy ultrasound is an exciting time. It's an emotional time. It's a happy time. But for Fifi, it's a time that she wants to be over. She'd just rather go back right now. It'll be another four weeks before Fifi's babies are born. She'll spend her time resting in her enclosure until then. Good luck, girl. I think we're 20 on the way. You might just need it. Rest up.
Good ball. Your favorite. Good ball. <laughs> Ready? Sit. Good boy. Ready? Go. Come on. Come. Near Brighton, Jack Russell Snugs is up to his usual tricks. Stop, 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 stop. No, no, it is. Stop squeaking now, look. Oh, look, you've, you've done the squeak. It. You've broken it. New ball, please. Stop. Owner Amy and partner Ryan are kept busy with the lively 13 year old. He's had two balls within 20 minutes today. Yeah. Yeah, so there. He's partial to the occasional stick as well, so he just <laughs> chew up. I think he just gets to a point where he just has to destroy it. So. <laughs> get it, get it. But recently, Snugs has developed a limp. He's a good boy. He just flares up. If he goes out for a long walk, he'll just, by the end of it, he'll start limping a little bit. Yeah. He's quite happy for us to touch it and look at it. The couple are good friends with Scott's vet nurse, Reagan, and she discovered the possible cause of Snug's limp. Reagan was visiting with her dog, Shiloh. We were having a little bit of a play date, and we were giving him some belly rubs. She did notice a small lump on his leg. Reagan immediately suggested the couple take Snugs to see Scott up in Richmond. Having Reagan as a friend of ours has been quite important because Snugs can be quite nervous about the vet, so it would be really nice that if anything does happen that he's got somebody there that he really trusts and that he's comfortable with. You're our little Snuggies, aren't you? Amy wants to do everything she can for Snugs after the elderly dog was such a special companion to her dying mum. Good boy. Mum got diagnosed with cancer and some days mum maybe didn't have the sort of feeling to go out or, you know, to be active, but having Snugs was that reason to get up and go and have a walk and he gave to her unconditional love and probably in the time that she needed it most really in her life. <laughs> Fearing the little dog may now have his own health problems, Amy has booked him in for an appointment with Scott tomorrow. Good boy. I'd hate to think that he's in any discomfort at all, so it would just be nice to know, to get to the bottom of it, really. Yay! Good boy, Snugs. Good boy. Come on, boy. Yeah, good. Here's Snuggies, who's this? Vet nurse and family friend Reagan first pointed out the lump to Amy. God, he's so cute. Oh, he's a good boy. How's he been? Yeah, he's not bad. Just want to figure out what's going on with this little lump here. Yeah. We'll have lots of cuddles and everything today. Yeah, good boy. Hey. Yeah? Cool. So, do you want to just take a seat and Scott will come out and see you okay. in a sec? All right. Thank you. Lovely. Come see you in a bit. Go on, go, Daddy. Good boy. <laughs> I met Amy and Ryan this year, and instantly me and Amy just clicked. She has this, like, vibe about her, and I just love her personality, and obviously love how much she also loves animals. Fetch the ball. Fetch it. Get a ball. Get Fetch a ball. It. Good boy. <laughs> I think he's found all the balls you possibly have in the practice, so it's quite nice to see him quite relaxed, and, yeah, he doesn't seem that stressed, which is nice. Well, someone seems like he's uh, taking <laughs> advantage of the amenities. Yeah, I think he's in dog heaven at the moment. Oh, <laughs> so this is Snugs? Yeah, Snugs, come on. Come here. Hello. Oh, I think there's a ball stuck under there. Yes, <laughs> he's looking very snugly in his jacket. Hello, Chan. He protects us all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, then. Do you want to come on in? I have to get him away from those toys. Here, look, yeah. Snugs, yeah. what's this? Snugs, what's it? Come on. 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 What's this? Oh, yeah. Oh, here we go. Good, Good boy. boy. Oh, yes. You're easily bought, aren't you? He's obviously here for a reason and not because of his uh, low energy levels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, certainly not. Because he's full of himself, isn't he? So, what, what brings you here today? A couple of months ago, I was out walking and he looked like he'd stung his paw, is what it looked like, so he started limping on it. And then uh, Reagan and I noticed that there was an actual lump on the leg, so oh. obviously that's. But... There's okay. no change in his behaviour, or he doesn't okay. seem sort of overly concerned, just yeah. sometimes limps. Yeah, okay. Well, it's quite handy to have a, a mate that's a vet nurse. Yes, right? yeah, really <laughs> handy. Yeah. All right, so let me just have a little feel of this, champ. Can I have a little feel of your leg? Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. It's okay. Okay, good boy. Okay. It's all right. Good boy. Good boy. So, it's this bony lump on the yes. inside of the right knee. Is yes. That, is that what that's you're concerned it, about? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> good boy, good boy. So he doesn't like me touching it, does he? Straight away I can feel the lump that Reagan could feel. I give it even the slightest of presses and Snug's not happy. It goes around to potentially tell me off. But uh, it's clear that it's uncomfortable and it's painful. What I just want to do is just um, to flex and extend the leg. So if you just hold his head for me. Yeah, right. yeah. Just want to see. Good boy. Oh, shush, 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 shush. He knows it's, it's serious, so now. <laughs> yeah. Good boy. That lump is 
a little concerning, I yeah. must be honest, because it does okay. feel like bone. Yeah. I think we can all agree. Yeah. And when you've got a lump of bone on one of the limbs, unfortunately, sometimes it can be some things that you don't want it to be, things like cancer, potentially. It's really difficult to sugarcoat my concerns because if it is bone cancer, then it really is a death sentence. <sighs> so I'm sorry to I'm upset sorry. you. I know it's okay. It's all right. I, I know it's it's a shock, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's quite upsetting. So just trying to trying to keep it together for the moment, just to see actually wait and see and what what the what the issue is yeah, really. Don't have to worry just yet, but yeah. So, fingers crossed. The type of tumours that a bony tumour right. can present as are generally quite painful indeed, and that pain ramps up quite quickly to right. the point where they, you know, they're very lame. Okay. First things first, we need to take some bloods to make okay. sure that he is running perfectly healthily. Yeah. Give him a sedation to be able to keep him still enough to take an X-ray. If it is a tumour, they yeah. have a very distinctive look on X-ray, yep. so it will be quite quick and quite easy to be able to say yes or no. Okay. Being a vet, it's about having a diagnostic list that you then shoot down. And in this instance, I'm racking my brains to try and think of anything else but bone cancer that this could be. And I'm coming up short because everything else would be presenting in a very different way. Are you gonna say goodbye to mommy and daddy? And we'll keep your chat. There you go. Mm. Okay. Be good. Thanks, no worries. <laughs> yes, be good. Good boy, Snugs. See you in a bye bit. Bye-bye. Right. Thank bye. you very much. See you later. My pleasure. Bye, guys. Bye. Hi, Alarm. Hello. Hello. Right. Yeah, are you? Yeah, I'm all right. How did it go? Are you all right? Yeah. So, what did Scott say then? Uh, he's just going to take some blood tests and then hopefully do an X-ray just to see what the lump is. Just try not to worry. And as soon as we get any results, call you back in and, and Scott will talk you through everything. All right. Great. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, well, we'll see All you right. later. Okay, darling. I'll All see right. you in a bit. Bye. Dear, yeah, it's all right. I don't know who's more worried, you or them. Hey. Yeah. It's all right. Good boy. Okay, so. Have a little snooze, my friend, OK? We're concerned about the fact that not only this boy is an old boy, so this anaesthetic might be risky, but also we're sedating him, thinking that we're going to be diagnosing something not very nice. So it's a bit of a sad moment. I'm now getting a better chance to assess it, and you can just, just sort of see it visually. You know, it's not it is quite... something that we can kind of wish away anymore. It is there. Yeah. It did strike me as being in sort of an, I guess, unusual place rather than being directly on the knee or something like that. That's why I did feel it. It's definitely hard and bony. Does it feel like it's completely attached to? Yep. It does feel. OK. Yep, as much as I don't want it to be. This is a really hard one to navigate because when you have a hard lump on a bone in an old dog, it doesn't take much to think, you know what, that might be bone cancer. The only thing I can come up with is potential trauma, that there's a swelling there, but there's no history to back that up. Okay. All right. X-ray. If Snug's leg bone appears pitted or pockmarked on the X-ray, it will confirm Scott's fears that the little dog has bone cancer. Okay. Not quite what I was expecting. Looking at these x-rays, I feel pretty confident that it isn't bone cancer, which is fantastic. There really doesn't seem to be the classic kind of coral-like appearance to the bone. It all looks pretty good, but it's still a little bit of a question mark as to what the slump is, but it's not associated with the bone, so I'll take that. It's good. <laughs> While Snugs is still fully anaesthetised, Scott now wants to recheck his range of movement to hopefully shed some new light on the mysterious lump. Bending and flexing, extending, moving all of the joints around and just doing some assessments that Snugs would allow me to do in the consult room. It's weighing up everything. It's certainly not something that you want to jump into a diagnosis because it's serious if I get it wrong. Hmm. Okay. Right. So that's that's uh, 
don't think I've ever smiled whilst diagnosing that before. What does he have? He has a mild cruciate rupture. I'm so happy. Oh my <laughs> God. I cannot wait for you to tell Amy. I think she's just gonna, mm. she's gonna be so happy. It's very good news. Yeah, very good, but I just needed some time to make sure. Okay. <laughs> so uh, maybe, uh, maybe I'm an old dog as well. My cogs are turning slower than they used to. I don't know. <laughs> Eureka, I find that the stifle, the knee, has some instability, which would suggest that Snugs may have a cruciate ligament rupture, and that then all explains why he's also got a lump. Hi, guys. Hi. All right. Your anxious wait is over. Come yeah. down and see your guy. Thank you. Oh, baby! Oh, baby! Look at boy! 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 Um, make it very easy for you that the news is good. Oh, okay, good. Okay, yeah. good, good. Told you! <laughs> but it was a little bit of a complicated web that we needed okay. to unwind. Okay. Okay, because up until this point, you thought that the lump caused the limp. Yeah. Right. But in fact, it's the limp that's caused okay. the lump. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to show you the x-rays. Let's just right. go and have a little look here. So there's the kneecap, okay, there's his femur, and there's a tibia and fibula. The lump is on the side of his knee, as we all could feel, and is still there. So what, in fact, your dog has is a potentially partially or completely ruptured cruciate ligament. Right. Okay. So that's an important ligament in the knee that, that basically stabilises the stifle, the knee joint. And what's happened over a period of time is that the body has naturally tried to stabilise it by bridging the gap, and it's bridged it by producing this thick bit of okay. tissue Okay. Here. That tissue is developed over this, which is a normal part of the bone. Okay. And that's why we could feel that prominent lump. Right. But rather than thinking that the lump was causing the limp, actually, the lump has helped to probably make the limp a little better. Okay. Right. But because you, as loving doting owners, didn't realise that he had a knee injury, right. you've kept exercising him, and so right. it hasn't had the chance to heal. Okay. Properly. Yeah. So, from bone cancer to cruciate ligament is a long way yeah, yeah, away from each other. Sort of yeah. My treatment plan for snugs moving forward is restricted exercise, rest and anti-inflammatories. Worst case scenario, if it gets worse, if he starts being more lame, we can have him back in and perform surgery. Good boy. And it just means that he maybe needs to behave a little bit more like the old timer that he is. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Good luck. Yeah. More sort of casual walks in the park okay. um, and naps rather than really long, energetic walks. All right. Bye bye, right, Chan. Take you home. Bye bye, yeah. buddy. Lovely. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much for looking after right. I'm yeah, so glad Thank you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Thank you so take much. Care. I suppose today is a real good example of our job. It's sometimes not clear cut, it's not easy. You have to work with people's emotions at the same time as use your brain and understand what's going on with an animal that can't tell you what's wrong with them. So to put all of those things together is really the definition of our job. I'm just really glad that I got a good result. Owner's happy, dog's happy, so am I. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.